blessings in the mighty name of Yahshua Amashiach. Thank you again for joining me for part 6 of this study series on the book of Revelation. If you are watching this video without watching part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4 or part 5 about the rapture, what is worship, what or who is the beast, connect the dots and who are the two witnesses, I highly recommend that you do so. From the first video about the rapture, we can clearly see that the rapture is not the correct term. It is the mystery of Yah. And we can clearly see that the scripture stated that the mystery of Yah will take place at the second coming of our Adonai Yahshua Amashiach. So there is no pre-rapture family. In part 2, we broke down the scriptures to show that everything that we do is worship and that right now as we live we are either worshiping the most high or we are worshiping the devil in part three we look at who or what is the beast the beast is a physical kingdom that is being ruled by a spiritual beast that is a principality or the devil himself in part four we looked at what is the mark of the beast. The mark has three components, the mark itself, the name of the beast, and the number of the beast. We broke down what is 666, that is unmarried, unwedded, single, which is mRNA. We also broke down and explained that in order to have the victory over the mark, we must have victory over all three components. In part five of the series, we identified who are the two witnesses. The two olive trees are the two anointed ones of Yah, who the scriptures identify as Enoch and Elijah. Both will be killed. Their bodies will lie in the streets of that great city for three and a half days. After they will be given life by Yah and will be taken up at the time of the mystery of Yah being completed. Now, in part 6, we'll be looking at who is the bride. Who do the scriptures say is the bride? Is it the called out assemblies, aka the church? Of course you will say yes, the church is the bride. But can you show me that in scriptures? If such believers are considered to be the bride, who will be the guest? Surely it can't be the angels, for they are Yah's servants. The scripture clearly states that Yasharel is the bride, and the called out assemblies, aka the church, are the guest to the wedding. Let's search out the scriptures to confirm the identity of the bride and put this lie back to where it belongs. Let Yah's word be truth and every man a liar. Join me, Yasharel, as we will ask the Ruach Akadesh to lead us into all truth according to what the scripture says. Let scripture interpret scriptures, not religion, not churchianity, not your pastor, not your beloved YouTuber or the person you idolize and surely not our emotions. As Revelation 21 verse 9 states, Come hither, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's woman. Let's begin, Yasharel, and let us start from Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that is at thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Yasharel, who is the bride? Is the bride the church as they say? Oh, let me say this. Going forward, I will not be using the word church. The correct term should be ecclesia, which means the called out assembly. Church is a pagan term and doesn't denote the true meaning of what the church should be and what it should stand for. I will do a teaching on that someday. Now, 
I ask, what makes a wedding a wedding? What is needed, Yasharel? So, Yasharel, for a wedding to take place, first, there must be a bride and a bridegroom. That's a given, right? So, we're going to break down the scriptures. There are certain questions that will be answered from this study. We will be looking at who sanctioned this wedding, who legitimized the wedding. Was there a covenant? Who is the bridegroom? Who is marrying the bride? Who is the bride? Who is marrying the bridegroom? Who are the guests? Who are they that will be at the wedding? Who are the servants? Who are the ones that are carrying out the instructions of the groom? This is a typical structure of what a wedding should contain. So, Yasharel, let's search out the scriptures to know the answers to these questions. Before a wedding can be kept, the bride has to be chosen. Let's see how Yah chose his bride. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading from verse 6 to verse 9. Deuteronomy 7, reading from verse 6 to verse 9. And it reads, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps the covenant and the mercy of a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Yasharel, we are going to track this bright thing and sum it up, starting from the Old Testament into the New Testament, into the book of Revelation. So here, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, it says, Yah chose Yasharel to be a people unto himself. Before any wedding, the bridegroom is the one that has to choose his wife. This is marriage 101. Ladies, if you're listening, do not choose your husband. The husband chooses you as a wife. There's a blessing in that order, but I will leave that for now. This is not a marriage sermon, but you will get the gems, so listen keenly. No, it also states that the selection was based on the fact that Yah loves Yasharel, and because he would keep the oath which was sworn to our fathers Abraham, Isaac, which is Isaac, and Jacob, which is Jacob. This is the covenant right here, Yasharel. Are you seeing it? Key to note though, at this time, the called out assembly was not yet in the picture. Look at verse 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. No wonder the enemy wants us, Yasharel, to remain in sin and break the covenant. That way we won't receive Yah's faithfulness and mercy. Praise Yah for Yahshua, Yasharel. Hallelujah, He's worthy. Let me ask you this. What is the most important thing of a wedding? What legitimizes the bride for her husband? Let me know in the comment section what you thought was the most important thing of a wedding. And be honest, don't cheat. No. The most important thing or what legitimizes the bride for the bridegroom is the wife taking the name of the bridegroom. The name is what makes the bride his bride. So ladies, don't keep your father's name. Doing so will keep you in your father's image. There is a blessing in that order. Another marriage gem. Let's continue. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, reading from verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, reading from verse 14. And it reads, If my people, 
who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Yasharel, who is this that is speaking? This is Yah himself saying this. How do we know? Let's go to verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people. So it's a clear cut, Yasharel. It's right there. This is Yah that is speaking. Are you seeing this, Yasharel? Yah himself said, if my people who are called by my name. I'm going to show you that we're all in a very serious battle and you fail to realize it. All that is happening and all that there is, is just set up to deceive you from the truth. Now answer this. What is the name of the God of the Bible? They say it is Jehovah, which is not a name but a title. They say he has no name. So how come his people are called by his name if he doesn't have a name? Are you seeing it, Yasharel? They purposely remove his name from the scriptures. No, I ask you this again. Who are his people? They say Israel, right? Israel. Can you tell you in what the scriptures say with that? My people who are called by my name. If the people are called Israel, then his name must be Israel too. Or have IS or IS at the start of his name, right? Because it says, my people who are called by my name. These wicked people created this German man-made language known as English language and forced it unto us to deceive us all. Now, let's bring understanding to this. Let's go to Psalm 68, verse 4. Psalm 68, reading from verse 4. And it reads, Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol his name that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. We all know that the letter J is not in Hebrew and that the letter J was not a part of the English language until the year 1524. You don't believe me? Let's look at it. When was the letter J added to the alphabet? The most recent addition to the alphabet dates back to 1524 and was the letter J. Before that time, the letter I was used to express the sound for both the vowel and the consonant currently represented by I and J, respectively. Didn't Yah and Yahshua existed way before 1524? You have to know the wickedness of this world, Yasharel. Let's look at the same verse without the letter J in it. Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Are you seeing this, Yasharel? His name is Yah. It's right there. No. Let's look up the Hebrew word for Israel. If you do your studies, you will see that Israel in Hebrew because Israel is the English word, all right? It is Yasharel. But I believe that the H is missing from it because it should be Yah, all right? But it's not Israel, it's Yasharel. Israel is English, all right? Just like how they tricked us and told us that Jesus is English, Jesus is actually Greek, which means earth pig. But that's for another day, all right? Now, let's look at something I want to reveal to you. The name of Yah in the name of his people. We read in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people, this is God speaking, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Alright, so we're going to try to show you that the name of Yah is in the name of his people. We're not using the English language or no German. We're sticking to the Hebrew. If my, this is God speaking, right? People. What is the name of his people? Israel in Hebrew is Yasharel. Are you seeing the name Yah 
in the name of his people, Yasharel, which are called by my name. What is his name? What is God's name? His name is Yah. So his people who are called by his name, Yah is in the name of Yasharel. Yah is in the name of Yahshua. Yahshua said, which is the son of Yah, he said that he came in his father's name. Yah, Yahshua. Yahshua means Yah saves. It means salvation. Jesus means earth pig. All right. I'll do a future study in the name explaining the Hebrew in some future day. But for now, I just want you to see it. Yah is in the name of Yasharel. Yah is in the name of Yahshua. All right. Hallelujah. Why do you think it's the highest praise? It means praise Yah or praise unto Yah. That is what Hallelujah means. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Praise be unto Yah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Yah, you are worthy. Let's continue, Yahshua, because I'm getting excited. This is the seal. The taking on of the name makes you his. So when you are in church and they are quoting this scripture, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, guess what? They are misapplying it. This is not for the called out assembly. Yasharel, the Most High has not forgotten his people. And I will show you. Keep watching. Now, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16, reading from verse 8 to verse 21. Ezekiel chapter 16, reading from verse 8 to 21. I just want to give you the background of what is happening. So this is Yah speaking to Ezekiel. And we can verify that in verse 1 and verse 2. When it says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. This is Yah speaking. Now let's jump all the way to verse 8. And that's where we'll start. And it reads, Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was a time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee said the Lord God, and thou became his mine. Yasharel, please pay close attention to Yah's word of how he describes Yasharel, the love language he uses to express his love for us. All right, let's pick up from verse 9. Remember, it says that, said the Lord, and thou became his mine. Yasharel became his. All right, so we're validating how he chose Yasharel to be his bride. Then washed I thee with water, Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thy ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was a fine linen and silk and broided work. Thou didst eat flying flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceedingly beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, said the Lord God. But thou didst trust in thy own beauty, and playedest the harlot because of thy renown, and poredest out thy fornication, and every one that passed by, his it was. And of thy garment thou didst take, and deck thy high places with diverse colours, and placed the harlot thereupon. The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, and didst commit wardom with them, and tookest my broidered garments, and coveredest them, and thou hast set my oil and my incense before them. My meat also, which I gave thee, fine flour and oil, and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savour, and thus it was, said the Lord God. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast born unto me, and these as thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy wardoms a small matter, that thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them? 
Yashavel, we have a lot to repent for. So let us turn unto Yahuwah, for the time that is remaining is short. Yashavel, throughout all scriptures we can see that Yashavel is the bride. And many might say that the Lord has divorced Yashavel for good. But I say, and the scripture says as well, that is a lie. Let's jump to the New Testament and hear what Yahshua says, who is the bride. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 15. So Yahshua, this is about when the disciples of John came and asked, saying, Why do they and the Pharisees fast, but not the disciples of Yahshua? So we're going to read the response that was given by Yahshua. Verse 15, and it reads, And Yahshua said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn, as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. The bride chamber is a place where the gathering was held. But notice how Yahshua said, the children of the bride chamber. We are the descendants, the children of the bride, Yasharel. You can find the same account also in Mark chapter 2, verse 9, and Luke chapter 5, verse 34. And also check out John chapter 3, verse 29. Let's continue and jump to Matthew 22, reading from verse 1 to verse 14. Matthew 22, reading from verse 1 to verse 14. And we'll read it in its entirety, and then I'll break it down. And Yahshua answered, and spake unto them again by parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrought, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in either, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yasharel, there are so many revelations in this parable. It's amazing. I don't want to get too excited. So let's stick to the wedding, all right? Let's read it again, but much slower and highlight a few things. Picking up again from verse 1. And Yahshua answered and spake unto them again by a parable, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Who sanctioned this wedding, Yahshua? The king. Who was it for? It was for the king's son. Who is the king and who is the king's son? I don't think I'll have to go deep into this because we are all familiarized with this. The king is Yah and his son is Yahshua. Let's continue. Verse 3. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Yahshua, well, let's look at the Greek word for bidden so we can get a better understanding and bring a revelation in this word bidden. Bidding G2564. Kaleo. 
Strong's G, 2564. Kaleo. 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 Oh, that's beautiful. All right. It says, to call, to call a Lord, utter in our Lord voice, to invite, to call, that is to name by name, to give a name to, to receive the name of, receive as a name, to give some name to one, call his name, to be called, that is to bear a name or a title among men, to salute one by name. Yasharel, I want you to focus on A to C. Do you realize that the emphasis is about a name being given to name to give a name to to receive the name of receive as a name to give some name to one call his name to be called to bear a name or a title to salute one by name isn't it customary for the bride to receive the bridegroom name his name is Yah and his bride is Yasharel. Let's go back to Matthew 22, picking up from verse 3. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. No, we have a better understanding what bidden is. And they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrought, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Notice, Yasharel, that it says the wedding is ready. How can you have a wedding without a bride? Obviously, the bride was already there from the beginning. So those who were not worthy were those who the servants went to minister to, who are the ones that are lost, the lost children of Yasharel, children of the bride. If the prophets were sent to minister to them and were murdered, don't you think the prophets were a part of the bride already selected? It's right there, Yasharel. Are you seeing it? It's right there. Now let's see what happens when the lost children of the bride refused the invitations. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants who went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Notice how verse 10 ends. All these people good and bad that were invited to the wedding were invited as guests it's right there with guests they did not replace the bride they are guests to witness the marriage between Yahshua and Yasharel we are told that the Carlot assembly replaced the bride but that is a lie from the pit of hell because of Yasharel's stiff nakedness and disobedience, the called out assembly was grafted in. Salvation is now of the other nations. Yah did this to bring his people to jealousy. Go watch my video on the two witnesses for the explanation of the olive trees in Romans chapter 11. Yah chose Yasharel and gave Yasharel to Yahshua. How do we know? Let's look at John chapter 17 reading from verse 6. To verse 10. John 17, reading from verse 6 to verse 10. So, this Yasharel is when Yahshua himself prayed for his disciples. We will not be going through all the prayer. You can read it on your own, but we're just picking up from verse 6 and reading to 10. And it reads I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of this world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. 
So Yasharel, we see here that those who belong to Yah were given to Yahshua by Yah. All those that belong to Yah now belongs to Yahshua. No wonder it said in Matthew 22 that the king made the marriage for his son. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Let's go back to Matthew 22 picking up from verse 11 to verse 14. Picking up from verse 11 to verse 14. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto them, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into utter darkness. For they shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Who is this man not having a wedding garment? To understand this, we must first know what the garment represents. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 13. Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 13. And it reads, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Here it says that Yahshua was clothed with a garment to his foot. I wonder what is this garment? Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to verse 5. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that had the seven spirits of Yah and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before Yah. Remember therefore all thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Yasharel, pay close attention here. Notice it says in verse 4 that some saints did not defile their garments. And yes, I said saints because this was one of the seven called out assemblies with the seven rock, the seven spirits, which you can read on your own about the seven churches in chapter 2 and chapter 3. Verse 4 further states that those saints will walk with Yahshua in white. And in verse 5 it says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Why would you need to overcome if one saved is always saved? And I will do a teaching on that in the very near future. Is one saved always saved? Be sure to check out that teaching very soon. Yasharel, what defiles us? Take one guess and say what defiles us. If you don't know, I will make it simple for you. And it is scriptural. What defiles us, Yasharel? What defiles us all is sin. Full stop. So in order not to defile ourselves, we have to be living according to how Yah requires us to live. Go watch my video on what is worship to get a better understanding. There are so many scriptures that proves this. But let's look at one more. Turn with me to Revelations chapter 16. Reading from verse 15. Revelations chapter 16, reading from verse 15. And it reads, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. How do you keep your garments, Yasharel? It's simple. By living according to how Yah requires. The garment is the garment of righteousness, which is a gift, lest any man should boast. 
the righteousness of Yahshua Amashiach. I'll do a future study on this titled The Righteousness of Yahshua Amashiach. Now, let's return to Matthew 22 and picking up again from verse 11. And it reads, And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this man did not have a wedding garment. Notice in verse 12 it says the king from verse 11. How do we know? It says, And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said to him, So it is the king, Yah, that is saying to this man. He says, Friend. He called the man friend. Yah called this man a friend. If you knew what that meant, you would know that this man had a relationship with Yah. I ask you this, Yasharel. Who was ever called a friend of Yah in the scriptures? Answer, Abraham. The scripture said Abraham was a friend of Yah. This man was a friend. One who had a relationship with Yah. Remember Matthew 7 verse 22 to 23. Which says, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Notice Yahshua says he never knew you. But here in Matthew 22, the king, Yah, Call this man a friend. Remember we just read in Revelation 16 verse 15. And it said. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. This man did not keep his garment. He came out of Yahshua. While he was a friend. He was in Yahshua. But he didn't keep his garments. Which signifies that he came out of Yahshua. Again, Yasharel, this proves that one save is not always saved. We have to abide in Yahshua. Didn't the scripture say if we abide in Yahshua, he will abide in us? Yahshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Whether you are from another nation or from the house of Yasharel, Salvation is only through Yahshua Amashiach. This man was not properly attired because he did not went through Yahshua. If his garment was defiled, it would have been something else. But this man was not attired in Yahshua Amashiach. I ask you this. Yes, you, the one listening to this teaching. Are you attired in Yahshua Amashiach? Is your garment defiled? We have a lot to repent for because it would be a sad, sad day thinking that we are okay. But in the end, Yahshua, when he sees us, he says, depart from me. I never knew you. That is why we have to know the scriptures and know what he requires. Because what we call okay might be what Yahshua calls sin. Being wrapped up in sin and defiling ourselves without even knowing it. Help us, Lord. Help us, Yahshua, for we are in need of help. Let's continue and read verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, both from the house of the bride and also from the called out assembly. This is where the church originated. But I'll leave that for another teaching. The call went out to many, but only those that have accepted the call and are faithful will be chosen. For the scripture says that only a remnant from Yasharel will be saved. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 17, reading from verse 14. 
Revelation chapter 17, reading from verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. See, Yasharel, if we are to be with Yahshua, we have to accept the call when we are called. Live as all he requires so we can be chosen and to remain chosen we have to remain faithful faithful by living a life pleasing to him by keeping his commandments and his words again once saved is not always saved we have to be faithful how you live your life will determine where you spend the rest of eternity so Yashar, before we use the scriptures to show that the bride in the book of Revelation is also Yasharel, let's look at a verse that I know people always use and misquote to say that the called out assembly, aka the church, and Yasharel are the same. There is no more Greek nor Gentile, that's what they're saying. Turn to me to Galatians chapter 3, reading from verse 28. Galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 28 there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Amashiach Yahshua let me ask you this Yasharel is there a difference between Jew and Greek of course there is is there a difference between bond and free if you say no, how about you trade places with a murderer in prison and then come back and tell me that there is no difference? Because there is, okay? Is there a difference between man and woman? If you say no, <laughs> I don't know. Can a man give birth? Can a man breastfeed? Of course there is a difference between a man and a woman. So obviously for you to use this scripture, simply means you don't understand what it is saying so let me help you let's read the same verse in romans chapter 10 verse 12 and understand the context of what it is saying romans 10 reading from verse 12 and it says for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich and to all that call upon him are you seeing this yasharel let scripture interpret scriptures. There is no difference when it comes on to those who call upon him. That is what it means. When it comes on to who calls upon him, there is no difference. Whether you're a male or a female, you call upon him, he will answer. If you're from another nation or you're from the house of Yashamel, you call upon him, you will be answered. That is what it means because there is a difference between bond and and free what it actually means is that those that call upon yah he will answer it doesn't matter he's not a respect of persons that is what it means so please don't use this to say we are all one and you will see in the book of revelation that further proves that there is a difference hallelujah praise yah no Let's burst this final lyric and drop the mic after this as they say. Smiley face. Turn with me to Revelations chapter 19, reading from verse 7 to verse 9. Revelations chapter 19, reading from verse 7 to verse 9. And let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Are you seeing it, Yasha? Scripture interprets scriptures. The linen represents the righteousness. All right. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of Yah. So, Yasha. This is the marriage supper, arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen 
is the righteousness of saints. Let's continue and go to Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 1 to verse 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, new Jerusalem, coming down from Yah out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Who is this new Jerusalem for? Let's continue and jump to verse 9. Verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. John is now getting to reveal to us who the bride of the Lamb is. Let's see. Read verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Yah. It's right there, Yasharel. The bride will abide in the new Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. How do we know? Let's continue. Verse 11. Having the glory of Yah, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. At the twelve gates, twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Yasharel. The great city, Jerusalem will have twelve gates, each belonging to the twelve tribe of Yasharel. All praises to the Messiah. Yasharel is the bride of the Lamb. But what about the other nations? Let's jump to verse 24. And the other nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. What is the it? It's the new Jerusalem. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. I recommend that you read all of this chapter and piece everything that I'm saying to you. So the other nations which are saved shall walk in the light of Yasharel, New Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem. So in Revelation 22 verse 17, let's, let's go to it. Let's go to it. Revelation 22 Verse 17, and it says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life. So when the Spirit and the bride says, Come, who is the bride, Yasharel? Let scripture interpret scriptures. You can say all you want to say, but you can't change what Yah says. The bride is the children of Yasharel. Mic drop. Game over. Yasharel, as usual, it's my pleasure to bring the word of Yah to you. Don't be fooled by the lies of this world. Protect the temple of the Most High at all costs. Don't let your guard down. Pay attention to what the scriptures say and not the hand that the enemy is showing. Remember, the devil is a liar. He is a liar from beginning. Until then, Yasharel, keep strong, be strong. Know that you are the righteousness of Yah in Yahshua Amashiach. For so is Amashiach, so are you in this world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you everlasting peace. Yasharel, prepare yourself, adorn yourself, fix up your garment, take off the filthiness, repent and return unto him, for he is coming for a bride, a bride that will be spotless. How would you be spotless? If you receive his righteousness and live according to how he says, Know the scriptures, know what he says is wrong and what he says is right and live according to that. 
So when he come, he will say, this is my beloved servant in whom I am well pleased. Bless you all. Bless you. In Yahshua's mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Yahshua. Our nation have been through a lot. Our forefathers, including us, are responsible for what has happened to us. As a people, as a nation that once was, we have removed ourselves from the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have committed whoredom and have chosen another God besides Yah. And as a result, the enemy has infiltrated the way of our life and have given us a God and a religion that has resulted in us to be cursed for centuries. Look at our history and answer me this. Have Yah forgotten us? With the horrifying history of all our people have been killed and destroyed, or are we still here? We should have been extinct like the Red Indians, but we are still here. Why is that, Yasharel? I will tell you why. Throughout all that we have been through, Yah has been forever faithful, and that is why we are still here. He has never left us, and that is why we still exist. His grace is waiting for us to return. I say to you, it is time. It is time the children of the bride to return to the bridegroom. Let us repent and return into his open arms of love. Come out of her, my people, say the Lord your God. You are the ones chosen to be a light unto the other nations, to bring them into Yah's glory. But instead, we are being told who God is, and we are being taught by other nations that does not know our Father in heaven. Have you seen how far we have fallen, Yashamel? We are just like our forefathers who failed to see Yahshua Amashiach when he first came in the flesh. Let us not make the same mistake and return unto him. All that has happened is because of our unfaithfulness and stiff-neckedness. We have strayed and has abandoned his commandments and statutes, and as a result, we know not what we worship anymore for we have fallen in love with other gods let us look to the word of yah and live accordingly let scripture interpret scriptures let us plead no more to the unjust judge but let us now put our cry to abba yah like our forefathers did in egypt and a deliverer was sent Repent, I say, repent, Yasharel, for the time is at hand, and soon the bridegroom will appear. Let us put off the filthiness of this world and ensure that we are ready. Will we see him and be accepted, or will we be put to shame? It's time, time for a change, a time to see the everlasting glory of our Father, it's time to return to the King. We owe that to Him, for He has been waiting and waiting, for He is forever faithful, and soon He will wait no more, for that great day of the Lord is at hand. Prepare yourselves, Yasharel, gird up your loins and dust off the dust from your feet. For the second exodus is fast approaching. Bless you, house of Yasharel. Yah loves you. Hallelujah. Praise.
Iglesia. Oh! 